So I just added an ABS right there and it works. So what is happening here is the following. When I get the size for the rectangle area, it is a rect2. And a rect2 consists of a position, a size, and several utility functions. But negative values for size are not supported. So that is why you use ABS. So what ABS does, it returns, in this case, a only positive value for the size of the rectangle, even if it's negative. So that works as expected here. So now we have our UI drag box. But there's something going on that I am seeing here. There's some snapping going on. So let's hide the box whenever we deselect it. So whenever we release this, let's give here a UI drag box visible equals false. So now whenever we deselect the box, it should disappear. Okay, and we still have that bug issue here. Let's see what we can do about it. So I believe that the first thing is we should get the size right after here. So right after, if the mouse is clicking, we should already start updating the track rectangle size. And we also should update our nine patch rectangle. We should wait for a single frame so it waits until it's visible. That should be able to fix the issue. Yeah, now it's fixed. Okay, now let's continue here. So now let's go ahead and make the cast selection algorithm. So this is going to select, actually select units. So what we're going to say, it's first we need to get the list. So for unit inside our our box selection units visible to the screen. And here I'm going to say for their, their parents, so for their values. And here's why. If you remember the structure of our, our dictionary, here it is. It's ID and their parent unit. So in the case of our test unit, it's going to collide against our character body 3D. So on unit entered, the unit here is actually going to be the character body 3D because this was the node that collided with the blue square of the camera. With this blue square of the camera, then it's going to be called here. When we add it, we are going to add in the ID of that collider with its parent. So we are not adding multiple units because the ID is just of the collider. And the unit itself, which is this guy here, which we want. So let's create now a selection graphic for our unit. So let's create a Sprite 3D. This is going to be temporary just for us to see it. And let's use our image on the drag box. Let's increase the pixel size, not that big. Points, well, point 25. Let's rotate this or change the way here to Y axis. And it's too big, it's 0 0.5, no, point 0.1. There we go. And let's modulate this to something else like blue and make it somewhat transparent. Let's give 75. And let's put just above the triangle there. So this sprite 3D is actually going to be called selected. And let's add a script here to our unit just as a test unit. And we're just going to create one function here. And it's going to be function selected. So what you're going to do with this function is by grabbing our selected node, we are going to just turn it visible. So visible equals true. And when we start, so I'm going to need a function ready here. We are going to hide that. 
So selected visible equals false. So when we start the scene, okay, something, this is not a function. Any errors? No. So when we start the function, when we start to run this scene, the unit is going to hide its selected. And then when it's selected, it's going to select it. So um, let's go here. And yeah, we actually need another function here. I just forgot. We actually need a deselect function. And it's going to be the same thing as this guy. We can just copy this here and use the function instead. There we go. Now we're cool. So let's go here. So for units inside the box selection unit, we're going to say for each unit inside the box, we're going to say if the drag rectangle area it's it's so let's call it abs so it's positive size if you call abs inside the rectangle 2 it's going to return with its width and height so this is what we want so if that rectangle has points so has point is another function of rectangle 2 which is going to say if that point you give it it's going to be inside the rectangle too. And this is our selection drag box. But the point actually is the unit position. So if you remember for our scheme previously, we want now to unproject the 3D position to the camera. So let's grab our camera here, play a camera, and we're going to need to unproject the... So let me just do the following. Let's go to our camera script. And let's go and actually create a function here. So this is our RTS camera script code we did on our previous tutorial. And we're going to go ahead and create a new function here. And it's going to be get vector two from vector three. So this is going to be return a vector two, and the vector two is going to be get based on the camera, which is the camera of our object node. So let's access from the camera the unproject function, and it's going to ask for a a three D vector. Yeah, so we're going to ask. Um, project from vector three, and this is going to be a vector three argument which you are going to be requested. So on um, project vector three, and this is going to be our return. So on um, project position, if we left click on it, it's going to return a vector two, which returns the two D coordinate in the viewport rectangle that maps the given three D points in the world space. So this is more complicated to explain than to actually show you. And this basically is going to grab a 3D position of our object and in, through our camera is going to convert that to a 2D position so we can check if it's inside our UAE drag box. So now that we have this function here, let me just place a comment here. Um, project vector three to vector two. So let's copy now this function to our play interface script. And so we are going to get the player camera and ask to get a vector two from that unit. So we can ask unit and we want unit is going to be a node 3D always. So let's ask here unit dot transform dot origin this is equal to its 3d position so if that is true then we're going to select the unit so let's go and type here unit and because we made a a select here for our test unit we can do unit dot selected and if not then else units Unit dot deselect. So just by doing this, 
Now we have a workable selection and let's try to see if it works. So let's see the chain of events. First thing, we want a group of selectable objects for us to check if it's inside our selection drag box. We create this group like a list with nodes that are entering our area 3D which belongs to the camera. If the node enters it, it's going to be added to an array list, which we can check using our drag box. Then when we drag our box, we are going to go right here to the code and cast selection, which is the function here. And if it's 3D position in 2D is inside the drag rectangle area, we're going to select it. And select simply makes the selected sprite visible. So it's going to do this. And this already represents what we want. So let's see if that works. And as you can see, if we select it, it's going to activate that. And now we can also hide the visible collision shapes. Let's run the scene again. And you can see we can select our scenes. Let's position the sprites just a little lower. So this right here, just a little more above the ground and a little bigger. You can actually put it on the front, like here. Now if we run our scene, that should work better. And as you can see, we now have a camera and a RTS selection system and a drag box. Now we can select pretty much any units. So what is happening is it's converting the 3D position, which is the center of it. So just like here, if that is inside the drag box, then it's going to be selected. And as you can see, it works as expected, which is pretty good. So there we go. We now have a select box. And if we duplicate this and rotate it a bit, just like so. So just to see what it's going to look like, let's run the scene. So now we should be able to select one unit and multiple units. So now, as you can see, we have a working test scene of our RTS. And this is pretty much it. Now, of course, we're going to change later how units behave, but the idea is still the same. By selecting, by detecting their position, if it is inside rectangle. And because this rectangle is a UI drag box, is a nine patch control, we can say modulate this, and it's going to change the appearance of our drag box. And this was the reason that I used a nine patch control node. You can use to change graphics fairly easy. So that was the idea. So that is how you can do a track box selection. I hope you like this tutorial. And as you continue to build the structure for our RTS, mm -hmm.